The materials that you'll need for the beefcake hopper are 6 op brown or tan thread, size 6 Orvis 1638 dry fly hooks, zappa gap, medium brown rubber legs, medium tan barred rubber legs, mini tan barred rubber legs, 2 millimeter tan foam, 2 millimeter loco tan foam, some orange loco foam in an eighth inch wide strip for the indicator and some brown thin skin. You can see that the pieces of foam in this picture have already been cut to the design tapers. The dimensions for those tapers are on this next slide in text. I find it extremely helpful when making those cuts to use an X-Acto, a razor knife, and a nice straight edge. Start off by debarbing the Orvis hook, taking the bottom piece of foam, which is the loco foam, and sliding the hook point first through it, about a half inch in from the tail end of that piece. Once you have your thread attached to the hook, you're going to want to put a thin layer of zappa gap along the top part of the hook shank. Then take a small scrap of foam, about an eighth of an inch wide, and a few inches long. We're going to attach this directly behind the eye of the hook. The first couple wraps of this will be fairly loose so that we can build a bulkier front end of the hopper silhouette. After your first three or four wraps, you want to tighten down the pressure and build a thin tapered underbody. This gives us a nice platform or foundation to attach our wraps and our overbody to. It also gives the pattern a nice three-dimensional rounded appearance to the body when it's finished. Once you have that wrap back, wrap your thread over the foam base and secure it in place directly above the bend of the hook. Having a rotary vise in this situation is extremely helpful. You reach up from the underside with your offhand and as you place the wraps over the foam, it's extremely beneficial and important to squeeze down on that foam as you tighten the thread. Once the pattern's upright and you've rotated it back, you want to put a thin layer of Zappa Gap on the top of the bottom piece that you just secured. You're going to bring in your two millimeter triangle of tan foam and squeezing those pieces together, you're going to place another additional four to five wraps to secure it in place. As you move forward with these wraps, it's important to note that the thread will return to the hook shank, moving about an eighth of an inch at a time before it is once again wrapped over the bottom and the top pieces of foam to secure them in place. Once you've built up three segments, you'll then bring in your brown thin skin material for the wing. You can see that at the back tapered end, taking the scissors and I've cut into or I've snipped that material to give it a little bit of a splayed or a broken wing appearance. Once that wing material is tied into place, move forward creating another segment and once again secure in the second location the wing material on the top of the fly. At this point you're going to bring in the rear legs which are a combination of brown and tan barred rubber legs that have been knotted together. Secure each pair on each side of the body. If they don't quite sit where you want them to sit originally, put in a couple wraps and adjust them to where you see fit. They should extend back about an eighth of an inch past the end of the body. Once we have these both secured in place and positioned in the area where we want them to be, the front portion of these legs is going to be wrapped or attached to the hook shank portion that is actually covered with foam. We bring those legs inside essentially and we tie off that excess because it helps to build that bulky front segment or two uh, that we see in, in a silhouette of a grasshopper if we look at it from the underside where the fish will be seeing this pattern. Once you have that excess secured, go ahead and clip off the remaining pieces of the rubber legs and move forward to create one last segment. You can see that with this final segment, the chest area of the grasshopper is a little bit wider and a little bit larger. At this point, we're going to take some time to taper the foam head portion of it. You can simply do that by snipping that with your scissors. Top and bottom will both need to be cut 
and tapered to give it a more natural appearance. At this point, we'll bring in the mini pan barred legs. We'll put a couple wraps over those, and those are going to act as the antenna for the pattern. Just behind the antenna, you're going to want to place a small drop of Zappa Gap. And this is going to help adhere the piece of orange loco foam that will be acting as your indicator. Set that on top, ensuring that it sits over the top of the antenna. And that's going to help to force them out over the front of the head to give it an accurate depiction and silhouette from below. Once you have that secured, you'll be able to snip off the indicator foam and snip off the antenna to a shorter length, approximately about an inch or thereabout. It doesn't have to be perfect. Next, we'll bring in the double knotted tan barred rubber legs that are going to act as the front legs here. And knot them off because that segmentation gives us a really nice natural appearance to the legs when viewed from below. We're attaching them in the same way that we did with the rear legs. Once you have those secured with several front wraps, you can half hitch off to secure that, cinch it down, and snip the thread. Now, as you rotate this upside down to finish this off, I feel for the sake of durability that it's extremely beneficial to coat the thread on those front two segments and up to the tie-in point of each of the legs with a little bit of zappa gap. It's going to lock those in place and keep them from moving around or getting yanked out. Last step here is optional, uh, but eyes on grasshoppers are a fairly substantial characteristic. And very simple, you're going to come in with a sharpie and you're going to mark up some eye spots on each side of the top portion of the head. Once you have this done, your fly is completed and ready to go.